Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're watching this video, you probably have a really cool Peg Perigo Super Gaucho that isn't working. Yep. They are really awesome, but this guy right here, the main circuit board that's underneath the seat, it is highly prone to going poof, magic smoke. And guess what? There's no replacements. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to bring it back to life with just a very cheap $25 scooter controller. One of these guys right here. So um, I thought it would be easier to explain this out of the car, but I also want to show you guys how it would be mocked up. So here is basically what we have. Like I mentioned in previous videos, these super gauchos are super small. There's not much, not, not small, they're big, but there's not much room to put components. All you have is under the bonnet here. So in here, you obviously have to make room for your batteries and all your electronics. So you can see we have room. If you guys are salty, you could actually put 48 volts. So this is three uh, 12 volt, 10 amp hour batteries and this one's an 8 amp hour. I'm waiting for my order from Amazon. Um, I'm just gonna go with three. I have done 36 volts in the past and the thing would lift the front tires. So one of the viewers actually mentioned if I'm gonna make a wheelie bar. If I was gonna run 48 volts, which I was would be four packs in series, heck yeah, it would need a wheelie bar because it would be spacing the sky. So basically, this is what we've got, guys. This is all the components. We've got the speed controller. Some people call them ESCs, short for electronic speed controller. Um, this one right here, I'm gonna put a link to all of the products I use to get this thing back to life in the description. So look at that down at the bottom. Um, and I'm gonna have links to our Amazon affiliate. So if you guys could purchase from those links, it would be great. It helps us make these videos. So I'm gonna have a link to a thousand watt scooter controller because each motor is 300 watts. So it's 600 watts, thousand watt controller to be safe. Um, you're gonna have a double pull, double throw relay and a step down or some people call these buck converters because this is 36 volts. We can't just throw 36 volts to the lights, to the relay coil. Um, so this steps it down so you have inputs and then you have outputs. Outputs is going to be the 12 volts. So one of these is going to go up to the coil positive that is going to trigger reverse. We are not going to run braking on this because it has mechanical brakes. It is really easy to add just a second relay and it would look like this. I'm a visual person so I'm trying to explain this to you guys the way that I learn. So this right here is two relays. Power will be coming in from the controller from here. And when you hit the brake, it's going to close the relay, which shorts out the motors, which we have a resistor here that would dampen the braking. And then power comes out of this relay, out of these common relay coils, or common relay connectors. And I'm also gonna point out, make sure you're buying heavy duty relays, guys. Don't get cheap and get the 25 amp. See what I'm talking about? See the size of that wire compared to the size of this wire? This white wire right here and the gray wire. All your load is carrying through those, so these can easily burn out. So yes, power is going out and into this relay, and this is the reverse relay. So power comes in, if you trigger the relay, it's going to switch the polarity. It's gonna cross over, and I'm gonna have a picture of what those connectors look like right here. So normally, power would be going into these right here, or in and then out. You can see the white wire. Power flows right through that normally. That's the normally closed, or NC. And then these back ones, these are the relay coils. So one goes to the negative battery and one goes, usually I do the positive to a switch. And 
I always get asked for wiring diagrams. These are my wiring di diagrams, guys. This is um, what I see. So pause the video and write that down. Brake relay, reverse relay. And then you gotta Y out to each motor. And that's the one I use if I'm using low and high. There's no reason really to do that in a variable speed. So I deleted that, and that is my normal wiring diagram that I go by. Okay, so let's show you guys this in operation. So if you have the Super Gaucho, rip out all the wires. And this is all you're gonna have, guys. This is it right here. So I'm just using this little 36 volt. It's a basically four and a half amp hour um, battery we have for a uh, crazy cart project, but it is going to work for just testing on the bench. So this is the speed controller and these are all the connectors. So this is called the power locks. Normally this goes to a key. I have it jumpered so that it's live right now because I don't want to wire up my key. But this will have to be disconnected otherwise it will drain your batteries. This one right here is the charge connector. You would connect that to a charge port. This is the brake connector, which goes up to the brake switch. Super Gaucho actually has mechanical disc brakes, but you're going to need to switch out the normally open switch, which this is the stock switch. When, when it's not pushed, it's open circuit. So when you hit the brakes, it lets this off which closes the circuit or opens the circuit in this one. But we needed one that was normally closed so that when you hit the brakes like that, it actually opens the circuit. So, and I'll demonstrate that. So that's why I don't need a, a braking relay. So it's going to cut power from the output of the pedal. So if you're hitting the brakes, you can't hit the gas at the same time. This is the derailleur connector. Um, this is a three wire potentiometer. So on the controller, you're gonna have a blue, black, and red. And on your Super Gaucho, this is your stock throttle potentiometer. So you're gonna have a blue, black, and a brown. The brown is your five volt out. So, or actually the input. So five volts is going through here. And there's the ground in the neutral and then the signal and how that works is when you pull or actually you're going to be pushing on the gas pedal you give it a little bit it's going to progress so the more you pull this out the faster it pulses the pulse width modulation so um, that's how you get the variable speed. The next connector, this is called the indicator. And normally this would go up to a light in the dash so you remember, oh, I have power on, so I'm gonna shut that off. But that's putting 36 volts out of the controller to that light. So we had to use a step down or a buck converter. So 36 volts going in, 12 volts is going out. And that is going out to that double pull, double throw relay that we used. And the last two connectors, this one right here is to the motors. Uh, typically blue is positive, yellow is negative. That's going feeding into your relay. And then it's connected by the white wire. So power's going out through these 10 gauge silicone wire I highly recommend upgrading the size of the wire. Resistance equals heat equals poor performance. And then it Ys into the motors. And I cut the wires to the motor shorter and use these 45 amp Anderson Powell power pole connectors. So when you hit, so, oh, and then oh, let's go back. So this is the motor leads, and the very last one, that's the power in. This is just rigged up. It's gonna be a, um, I'm gonna use probably a spark resisting 
XT90 connector coming out of the batteries through a 40 amp relay or 40 amp resettable breaker. And I'll do another video of it all together, but I wanted to explain that we can revive your Super Gaucho that does not work. All right, so that's your battery. Obviously red is positive, black is negative going in. Remember to fuse it, guys. Overload protection. So that's all of the circuits. Now, the one that goes to the coil is to your stock shifter. So the shifter has a spring-loaded button. So that's when you push it forward and go into reverse. And when I do that, it activates the relay. So that switches it over to the center one that switches the polarity and turns the motors going the opposite way. Make sense? Good. Glad. All right. So that explains the entire system, guys. I know in the last video I was talking about using this guy right here, which is 200 amps. This is basically for um, a small vehicle, but the problem was it needs a five wire get, uh, throttle pedal. And I didn't want to deal with all that because we're really cramped for size. So this was the best, most economical solution is a $25 scooter controller. And I don't know what the relays are. Um, I'm gonna put all the links to every product that I use so you guys can replicate this and get your kid back in with an upgraded Super Gaucho to 36 volts. So let's talk about tools because you can't just do this with scissors and super glue, right? So you are, I okay, I would highly recommend these Anderson power pole connectors because this is what happens, guys. Here's an example. Every single one of these where the motor connector was, they're all melted. I don't know if you guys can tell from the video if it's blurry, but every single one of these it literally got too hot. It's just not rated for these amps. You know, and this one's 500 watt. This one's a 1200 watt. This one was pushing bigger motors. But swapping over to these type of connectors, you're going to need uh, special crimps and special pliers. So you strip it off like normal, you feed it over, and you squish it with this, and then you slide your little connector over that barrel. Easy peasy. And then for some of your other connectors, because you can see that these are all males, right? Other than the ones for the battery. So you're gonna need the other connectors, which you're gonna need an assortment of, um, gosh, I can't remember what these are called, um, but I'll probably do a parts list, but you're gonna need, you know, s s um, some of the brass um, crimps, and then those take, of course, a different set of pliers. I've actually never tried it. You might be able to use the Anderson ones. These are specifically for Anderson power poles. I don't know, maybe I have to try that. So you're gonna need those, and then of course your regular crimp connectors for like your relays and stuff like that. Um, normally I use um, red for the really small stuff, like the 22 gauge, uh, the blue up to like a 14 gauge, and then you're gonna need the big 12, um, 12 gauge wire ones for the connectors on the relay. So start putting some parts together, guys. Uh, you're going to need six of those yellow ones and like two of the um, blue to get away with it, minimum. Um, I think that's it. I basically covered it. Um, so I've got, I explained this I think very well. Um, I'm literally going to use every single connector on here. This one that I didn't talk about, this is for brake lights. So when the brake is hit, it sends a signal and it'll, sh it'll um, 
put out 36 volts there, which I'm going to have a smaller buck converter that drops it down to 12 volts and then it's going to go to the tail lights. Like, it's just going to light up tail lights. And I might even do something in the center, I don't know. Um, and I thought about doing three LEDs in series and that would be the 36 volts. I might try that, you know, too. Because um, that'll eat up all of the 36 volts. Um, but yeah, so now the wiring is done. Basically, all I got to do is clean this guy up. So the next video, we're going to be removing decals, sanding, um, and getting this prepped, guys. I still haven't gotten any input on what color should we paint this thing. I'm thinking like a bluish green, like the new Toyota Tundras. My buddy has that truck, and I think it is sick. I'm going to put a picture of that right here. Tell me what you think, guys. Would that be a cool color? Basically, this is a Toyota. The Super Gaucho is supposed to replicate the old, what is it, the FJ or something like that? Um, Toyota something. Um, it's escaping me right now, but I know that there's like a big cult following of the old Toyotas. Um, and <sighs> I just got to figure out what color. I'm going to get it all sanded down. Probably do a coat of primer, probably a gray primer, and then it's ready for paint. And then we'll reinstall all these components, put all the wiring on, and maybe do a video on the headlight and taillight installation. But that's basically it, guys. It is possible to save that Super Gaucho. Get that thing back on the road, because it's amazing. All right, guys, hey. I appreciate you watching this video. Give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video on the Super Gaucho Revive.